how to design and analyze a gyrator device. A gyrator device represented by this symbol. It is like a two port uh, that there is voltage V1 I1 at port 1, voltage V1 V2 and I2 at port 2. And the relationship between these voltages and currents of this two port device is like this. So we have V2 equal to R times I1 and V1 is equal to negative R times I2. Be careful about direction of currents. So we can represent this relationship in a more f uh, formal format using matrices like this. V1, V2 uh, is 0 times I1 minus R times I2 and V2 is equal to R times I1 and plus 0 times I2. Or we can just say voltage matrix is related to current matrix for this two port using the impedance matrix Z that is completely and fully antisymmetric. Um, because of this antisymmetricity, which is pure, um, the gyrator device is actually a fully non reciprocal circuit because of this antisymmetric um, Z or impedance matrix. There is also another alternative way uh, to uh, define or to describe gyrator. Um, a gyrator is a device that reverses the polarity of the signal traversing or traveling from one side to the other side, but not the other way. And that is exactly representing this negative uh, sign here. So you can see that the current I2 is negated to become V1, but uh, that's not the case for the first one. So that's why uh, another symbol that is used to show the gyrator is like this symbol, basically saying when signal is traveling in one way, the phase of the signal is changed by 180 degree, representing a negation in sign, but not the other way. Having said that, one of the good ways to uh, realize a gyrator is using two op amps like this. So imagine you have your two port with port one here, um, the current I1 going through it. This is inside your the two port device using two op amps and this is the second port and this is the current I2 in this way. I'm showing it this way but uh, for the actual relationship that is needed for the gyrator uh, the current has to be going inside. Now assume that internally you have impedance Z1, impedance Z2, impedance Z3 and impedance Z4 and the way they are connected for these op amps are like this as shown here. Um, assume that you apply voltage V1 at the input terminal uh, resulting in a current I1 going to the uh, two port device and then you have a load ZL connected to the second port and a current I2 is coming out and you want to find out relationship between the voltage V1 and the current I2 and so on. Assuming that these op amps are operating in uh, non-saturation mode um, so that virtual short between the input terminals of op amps are valid or is valid. So in this case, this op amp is not saturated. So voltage, in, uh, voltage of non-inverting terminal should be equal to the voltage of inverting terminal. So if V1 is here, then V1 has to be here. And V1 is also here because they are connected. So assuming this op amp is also non-saturated because of virtual short, that voltage V1 has to, sh has to show here. And that means that voltage is here right over ZL. So we can immediately write, a, uh, write this equation that V1 is equal to I2 times ZL. Um, so we have that. But we still don't know the relationship between V1 and I1. To find that, we know that this port is V1, the voltage here. The voltage here is also V1 because exactly the virtual short property. Now you can see that the voltage here is V1, here is V1. This voltage V of X is common between these two impedance. So the voltage drop across Z2 should be equal to the voltage drop across Z1. Um, so from that we can say uh, Z1 times I1, that is the voltage drop across this guy, is equal to Z2 times Ix, that is the current going through Z2, which Z2 times Ix represent the voltage drop across this guy. So we can say Ix 
the current going through Z2 is equal to Z1 divided by Z2 times I1. That is relationship 1. So let's keep that. With the same argument, exactly same reasoning, the voltage here uh, is V1, and voltage here is V1. This voltage is common between for these two impedances, so it means the voltage drop across Z4 should be equal to voltage drop across Z3. Uh, because of that, Z3 times Ix is equal to Z4 times Iy, that is the current going this way through Z4. So from here, we can say Iy is equal to Z3 divided by Z4 times Ix. Let's name that as e relation 2. So from these 1 and 2, we conclude by substituting for Ix from 1 that Iy is Z3 divided by Z4, replacing Ix from here times Z1 divided by Z2 times I1. Let's name this 3. And we know that uh, when we have current I1, there is no current going through the input terminal of op amp, ideal op amp, because input impedance is infinite. Um, so I2 has to be equal to IY. That is here, number 4. Now, replacing, uh, uh, substituting for IY from 4, we have I2 is equal to Z2 over Z4 times Z1 over Z2 times I1. And now this is 5, and uh, substituting for I2 from 5, we get V1 equal to, instead of I2, we're going to write this thing, Z3 over Z4 times Z1 over Z2 times I1, and there is a ZL. So now we know V1 is related to I1 via this relationship, and V1 in this case happened to be the voltage here as well. Yeah appearing at the second terminal or not ter second second uh, port of the two two port device here so you can say the voltage at the second port is related to the current at the first port like i1 this way so v of the second port which is here is equal to r times the current going to the first port that is exactly representing this relation, and you realize um, a gyrator. We can also do it the other way, meaning that you could have you could have applied this V at the second terminal or second port of this device and measured the current here, and you could have seen that um, you would get uh, the other side of the gyrator equation. Um, there are many benefits realizing a circuit like this. Um, one of the benefits is input impedance is inversely proportional to uh, output impedance. So if you compute or calculate, the input impedance would be related to uh, 1 over ZL, uh, and effectively 1 over ZL would be multiplied by R square. And that's an interesting property because that would enable one uh, to realize an inductive behavior from a capacitance and vice versa.